So today I have a cool tip for embedding YouTube videos and 360 YouTube videos into Articulate Storyline. It's actually easy, it works great, and uh, there are a lot of cool things you can do. Now I will warn you, with great power comes great responsibility. And sometimes you can get into a YouTube video within Storyline, within a YouTube video, within a Storyline, within a YouTube video, within a Storyline, situation and if you're not careful you may be trapped three or four levels deep so five minutes here in tutorial land is more like an hour within youtube video within storyline land hopefully i can edit some of this together in some way let's dive in so First things first, getting the YouTube video in Storyline. Let's check it out. Let's dive in. Okay, before I lose too many of you, let's actually do the tutorial. So, the best way to embed a YouTube video in Storyline is by adding a web object. I'm just gonna go to google.com for now, just so I have a placeholder web object. And then I wanna scale it up to fit my screen. So 1920 by 1080, and then I'm just gonna align it left, align it top, and now my video is my full player size. I also have my player set to resize to fill the browser window. So now I have a placeholder web object that's going to Google. I need to actually get the right URL in there for my YouTube video. And to get that, I go to YouTube. So let's pretend this is the video I want to put into my Storyline course. I will scroll down to the sharing options, click the share button, I will click the embed button, and then I have a nice handy iframe URL embed. I don't need all the code, I just need the URL, this address right here. So if I go back to YouTube, that address is within this source attribute right here. So if I were to copy the source attribute over to Storyline, edit my web object, paste that, now my YouTube video is good to go and it's in Storyline. Now, it's good to go with YouTube standard settings. So to have a little more control over the settings with which my video plays in Storyline, I can click this show more dropdown. And now I have a little preview of what I'd see. So by default, you're gonna see suggested videos, you're gonna show the player controls, and you're gonna show the video title. Maybe I don't want some of these things, and let me show you why. I'm going to click play, and let me pause the video. Oh, here are some suggested videos you should watch. Luckily for me, there's stuff that I did, so it might be okay for you watching one of my videos. But if it's for a course in an LMS, I don't want YouTube to guess what videos I want my learners to see. So I'm going to turn that off so they don't see suggested videos. Also, this title here is clickable and it will launch YouTube and take me to YouTube to watch the video. I don't want my learners to be able to do that either, so I'm going to hide the title. Now, player controls, you might be okay with these, you might not be. This is a one minute video, so I just want them to watch it. I don't want player controls, I'm gonna turn those off, and I'm gonna turn off the enhanced privacy stuff. So by doing that, I now have, this, this box is updating as I check and uncheck things. So now my URL, my source is longer. It's added extra things, extra parameters that say, hey YouTube, I don't want you to play the video how you normally would. I want you to play it based on my specification. And each of these things are called extra parameters that you pass to the YouTube player so that it doesn't provide specific functionality or adds additional functionality. So one example of a parameter is rel equals zero. Those are the related videos, and zero is kind of like saying false. We don't want them. Let me go ahead and turn related videos back on. Notice how rel equals zero is gone. That's because the default behavior of the YouTube player is to show related videos. So in order to turn them off, we need to add the parameter rel equals zero to turn them off. So now that I've changed these settings in the embed options, I'm gonna come get this better URL with better player settings come back to Storyline, edit my web object, and paste my new URL. I'll be right back after I publish this so we can check it out. Okay, so I've published the video, refreshed, and here it is. It's in Storyline. It looks pretty dang good to me. Uh, the video is playing. Oh my gosh, my voice is annoying though. 
Uh, but nice, I have my player set up so it scales in the browser, so the YouTube video scales in the browser too. So one thing about that is if you go over here and you see the embed options, notice I have 560 by 315. It's not really important because I'm, I'm not copying the width and the height here, I'm just copying the URL. And then the size of my web object and storyline is dictating the size of the video, and YouTube is smart enough to fill the size of the web object with the video. So here, it's doing it perfectly, and then because I have my player set up to scale to fit the browser, the YouTube video is also scaling. And this works in both HTML5 and the Flash version, so it's very, very cool, very neat, very powerful. So notice how I had to click play to start the video though. You can actually make it autoplay. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna come to storyline, I'm gonna click edit, and then I'm gonna add a parameter, and we'll talk more about parameters in a bit. So I'm gonna do an and amp semicolon autoplay equals one. So now I'm gonna play automatically when the video loads. I'm gonna publish and be right back. So we've published, let's relaunch in the browser and it should just play automatically. Loading and so plays automatically. That is a thing of beauty. So you noticed how by adding or removing parameters, we could adjust the way the video behaves in the browser. Now there's this great URL that provides a list of parameters that I will include in the tutorial that you can add or remove to the URL uh, for your YouTube video embed to do different things. This is the YouTube string that I copied and pasted to get all that information. So the basic makeup of your YouTube embed URL is this stuff at the beginning that will always be there. Then you have your YouTube video ID and then a question mark. Whenever you're sending extra information to a web page, such as the YouTube player in this instance, to provide or to provide extra information or to request extra information, you have a question and then a series of name value pairs as parameters. Here is our first name value pair. Rel equals zero. Here's our second. Controls equals zero. Here's our third. Show info equals zero. And then you separate those name value pair parameters with an ampersand. Now, because we're requesting it through the browser, we're just using the, the code version of ampersand, which is and AMP semicolon. It's a little tough to remember if you've never seen it before, but once you've done it a few times, you'll just remember the, the, the way that it goes. Worst case scenario is you come back to YouTube and you copy and you paste. So let's do a couple trials just to kind of see how this would work. Let's say, for example, we wanted a video to auto start and we do not want controls. So I have my URL, I have my ID, I have my question mark, and I want it to auto start. So auto play, I should say auto play equals one and amp semicolon controls equals zero. Let's go to the link and see what else we can do. One of the cool things is there's a start, so I can specify the number of seconds with which I want the video to start. Let's say I want the video to start at 30 seconds. I can do start equals 30 and I want it to autoplay and autoplay equals one. So now it'll start at 30 seconds and it'll autoplay. Let's say I have a 10 second video of some process and I want it to loop. I can say loop equals one and, and let's autoplay. So, oops, equals one. Now again, I suggest you go through this list. We can start at 30 seconds, but we can also end at a specific time. Uh, there's all kinds of cool things that we can do. So here is full screen button on or off. If you want that or you don't want that, you can disable the keyboard so the space bar doesn't play pause like you'd expect it to. The right arrow doesn't seek forward, things like that. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of little things that you can do, and this is the basic structure of how you do them. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, one cool tip is, if you get one URL perfect, like let's imagine this video is exactly how I wanted it to play. Now let's imagine that I had the menu drop down in storyline with 10 slides for 10 videos. Well, I could simply duplicate this slide 10 times, come in here, come find a alternate ID number for a video, come into this web object and quickly just update the ID part and leave all the other parts the same. 
So to further drive home the point how quickly you can get things going, I created a little example. So what I did here was I went into my scene one, I copied this web object, I came into another scene, I created a layer, I pasted the web object, scaled it down to fit the size that I wanted, um, set up my properties the way I wanted. I wanted to reset the slide and then hide other slide layers. Uh, and then I added just a little generic text. Once I had that in there, I duplicated five videos. I came to YouTube. I found other embed URLs by jumping around and copying the IDs here and then updating the web object with new ID here and then published. It literally took five minutes. Uh, don't mind my design. I'm focusing on the embedding and updating of videos here. Uh, it's pretty ugly, but let's check it out. So here is video one. It's playing, it's beautiful. I click video two, it loads. I have a cool, cool. video three, hey, cool, video four, cool, and video five. I paused it real quick. So. This is very cool. In a matter of five minutes after I figured out how to embed YouTube videos, I made a YouTube storyline video player. You could create something like this for your team quickly to consolidate a bunch of videos. I could have these buttons be in a scrolling region if there were a bunch of buttons and boom, it's just pop into a different YouTube video. It's kind of a nice thing that you could create for your team. That's kind of cool, but one thing about video five, uh, notice there's this little thing up here. That's because it's a 360 video, oh my God, 360 video. So yes, I am embedding a YouTube 360 video into Storyline. It's ridiculous. Oh man, they are loud, I'm gonna turn down the volume. Sorry, my team is loud. But anyway, yeah, you can also embed 360 videos into Storyline and YouTube does the heavy lifting. So I played around and did some cool things and I kinda wanna show you what I was able to achieve within Storyline with 360 video as well. So I wanted to spend a little more time focusing on 360 video and Storyline and what is achievable. So we saw in the previous part that I had a little video player with some 360 video. I essentially did the same thing in Storyline, made it a full screen 360 video. There I am in rotoscoped and I can scroll around. Some of you may have already seen that rotoscoped video. There's the Storyline Championship Award over there on the team room wall. Pretty cool. But essentially what I did was I wanted to tinker and figure out how far could I push this. So what I did in Storyline was I set uh, my 360 as my default and published it. But what I have here is a little bit of JavaScript that says, hey, uh, is this an iOS device? If so, I want you to say set a variable of iOS to yes. And if it's not, set a variable of iOS to no. So if they're not on an iOS device or on an Android or they're in their default browser, they're gonna get this default video and it'll work just like how I showed you in the browser with all the other videos. It'll work perfect, it'll be full screen like this, beautiful. But if they're on an iPhone, they're gonna get the HTML5 version of the storyline. And I wanna show this little layer that's like, hey, this 360 video will work better in the YouTube app. Because in Safari on an iOS device, the 360 video just stretches out really wide and it doesn't have the YouTube 360 ability. So this little hack allows me to basically allow them to pop it open in the YouTube video. It's not great, it's not the perfect user experience, but it's what's achievable right now uh, based on what I know. And so I'm gonna kinda demonstrate some of that here in a little bit. So pause with me, I need to upload this stuff to my server. Um, so enjoy the elevator music while I get some uh, system administration stuff in order. Okay, I've essentially uploaded everything to my server and now I sent the link to my phone via email and I opened it on my phone. So if you notice the big play button, so if you notice the big play button, uh, you can see my iPhone here actually. If you notice the big play button, that's the storyline. Hey, you're, uh, you're uh, playing an HTML5 thing and you need to click play on an iOS device in order to get going. I'm gonna click that. So the YouTube video is loaded and I can play it on my phone. So this little square here is my phone. I could play it on my phone or I have the option to click that little button in the bottom right hand corner which will then say open in YouTube. If I open it in YouTube, 
now the YouTube app is opening. So I ran into a little bit of a technical limitation recording my iPad iPhone on my computer while also doing the 360 video because I'm trying to share my iPhone's video with my computer while also watching a video on YouTube so it thinks that I want to play the YouTube video through my computer so I kind of just have to hold this stuff up and you kind of have to trust me that it's working but as you saw uh, basically there was the pop-up that says open in YouTube and then once you open the video on YouTube I now have the 360 experience I'm gonna get a little blurry but as I turn and look around in 360 space or I can swipe whatever I prefer in YouTube, I can look around in 360 space um, and it launched from Storyline. So I can use the, the features of YouTube in order to get kind of the 360 immersive thing also on an iOS device. Now while that's not perfect and you have to go through those extra hoops of showing open in YouTube and you'd probably want to instruct your users on how it would work exactly and what they need to do in order to open things, it is achievable. And most of your users are probably going to be on their computers anyway, so they would be able to, especially if they have touch screens, swipe around with their fingers or uh, click and drag around 360 videos. So if you imagine the scenario with multiple videos, let's say you uh, have a new building built on campus and you want to give people a 360 interactive tour. You could create a blueprint map and the users could click around the blueprint map and see 360 videos of each of the new rooms without anybody ever coming to the new site. Uh, the possibilities are really endless. There are a lot of cool things that you can do with video from YouTube or other third-party platforms, Vimeo, Kaltura, whatever inside of Storyline and uh, 360 video is doable today inside Storyline. Uh, you can also do 360 in Vimeo wherever. Um, so just tinker with it and you know give it a shot. It's it's achievable. You could have 360 video to your users in a week if you really were pushing for it. So uh, it's a lot of fun. I had a good time playing around. Maybe I'll give you some close-up shots of this. I don't know how I would have to dance with my camera. Maybe I don't know, but uh, I think uh, that's a wrap. Maybe sure. That's a wrap. I gotta make it appear to be slow motion. And you need to be very, very careful when you do this because you can get into a YouTube video inside of a storyline show, inside of a YouTube, inside of a storyline show, inception kind of thing going on here. So, uh...